Check Podcasts. Hi, welcome to Chamber Chats. I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. I would like to acknowledge, first of all, that I live and work in the ancestral unceded territories of the Lekwungen Nations, the Songhees and the Esquimalt, and as always, a privilege and an honor to live and work alongside them. Uh, Chamber Chats is brought to you by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union, and we always, of course, broadcast here in the studios of Czech Television, a Chamber Champion and an ongoing partner with us. Uh, This week, we're going to do part two of an interview we did a couple of months ago. We're going to pick things up with the guy who runs the CRD, the Capital Regional District. Bob Lapham is the CAO of, Bob, what you've described as one of the most comprehensive, if not complicated, organizations of its type in Canada, right? Yes. Yeah. As a a regional government, uh, we not only provide regional services, but we provide local services to the three electoral areas, uh, and uh, South Spring Island, Southern Gulf Islands, and one of you guys. So it, it adds up to more than 200 individual services, each with uh, individual budgets and operating plans uh, uh, and a large number of uh, commissions and committees. I think more than more than 60 that feed into that uh, governance structure. Yeah, which that's one of the reasons we're doing this, too, is that we need people to have a better understanding of what the CRD, uh, CRD is and what you do. And how really essential, uh, you know, the last time we spoke, we talked about all these people saying they've suddenly discovered the parks and the trails that the CRD has put in place and been maintaining for a long time. That was a huge distraction and saving grace for people through the pandemic, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. We made a decision early on to keep regional parks open. If you recall the province, uh, because of uh, staffing and uh, management issues, uh, had to close provincial parks. And uh, we we worked with uh, our municipal partners and uh, felt it was critical to keep regional parks open right through the pandemic. And we've been operating... uh, consistently through there, uh, along with other essential services like water, wastewater, um, and, and emergency services uh, have been up and running all the way through. So, but that increase in usage has been really uh, incredible, uh, more than 25% year over year. Uh, really, we don't expect any change in that trend. Uh, I was out meeting with the Apache Dad Nation yesterday at Fort Renfrew and uh, and saw all sorts of people accessing uh, parks along the way, uh, both the visitors as well as many people um, from Greater Victoria. I mean, that that stewards that land too, right? I mean, in addition to being accessible to all of us, but, you know, Amanda and I are cyclists, we ride e-bikes and we would have been lost without those CRD trails through the pandemic. And we're going to keep using them, but stewarding that land means that it's going to be there in perpetuity. Yes, and the board uh, is right now considering adopting on an uh, inter-basis uh, re- new regional park strategy. So we've been working on that over the last six months. Uh, we've had a lot of consultation. So that uh, document's going to the board tomorrow. And then uh, it's in turn because we want to continue to work with First Nations over the next 12 months to address their concerns and future interests in land and water, which is uh, fundamental to their uh, their stewardship as well. So uh, it, it'll be a great partnership. And uh, the residents of Greater Victoria have contributed to land acquisition over the last 20 years. It's, it's built up a very large uh, um, number of parts and a large uh, land mass that we manage. Yeah, when you talk about the board, too, again, we remind our, our viewers that the board is made up of people that we select. They are elected officials from this region who then go to the CRD board level. So we have an input into that. It's not like the CRD is doing something that's unmonitored or or uh, uh, it's directed by by people that we elect. So that's something to keep in mind at election time, isn't it? Yeah, it's a 24-member board of directors, and uh, the unincorporated areas are three electoral area directors that are directly elected, and then the municipal councils appoint members to the board on a weighted basis. So far from Saanich, we from Victoria, two from Langford. And uh, in the case of Saanich and Victoria, they run a, uh, a referendum or a, a, a ballot um, that's not binding on council, but council then appoints those uh, top vote getters to the CRD board. Uh, I know there's been a very progressive conversation about including nations in in that board structure, too. We're going to talk about your relationship with nations shortly, but that's a pretty good step forward, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, So right now, the provincial legislation doesn't allow uh, First Nations participation at the board level uh, unless there's a modern treaty. And so we have uh, enabled participation at our standing committee level, uh, invited First Nations to participate at standing committees, and then are working with them on government government relationships uh, through uh, potential MOUs or other operating agreements. And uh, 
increasing the involvement in decision making. So rather than just referring matters to First Nations, we're we're trying to uh, increase the direct involvement of nations in decision making where their interests or or they would like to participate. And a key in that is understanding how they like to participate and how they would like to be involved um, in regional decision making. That's another one of the parts where it gets complicated for everybody, but you're working your way through that. That's for sure. Right. Uh, so, Bob, we also talk, as we did the last time around, about the CRD has been constant and consistent and reliable in management of, of sewage, of, of our water supply, of wastewater. Can't imagine the complications of the pandemic had that not been in place. And in fact, part of the, uh, the sewage and wastewater management has been a part of the diagnosis of the levels of COVID that we have around here. But at the same time, uh, we've had a very wet spring and summer which is not something we've seen in the last few years. Tell me how that's changed the dynamic of water management at the CRD. Well, the, the good news is the, uh, the water supply is, uh, I think, about 93% full. So we have a, a high capacity in the, in the reservoir. And uh, we tend to use about uh, 2 million liters a day of water through July. So that water usage has been lower than normal leading up to July. Uh, and then we had, uh, leading up to July, about 127 percent of the of our normal rainfall. So that wet uh, fall spring uh, has kept that water supply up, and now uh, people are starting to to draw that down. You refer to the work that staff does too, and uh, you know every sector of our economy is facing a staffing challenge right now. Um, with less water management concerns right now, does that make things a little different for your operation? And how are you doing with staffing in general? Uh, we've had really good luck with uh, our staff retention. Uh, obviously, we have the normal trends uh, where people are looking at opportunities. Uh, there's been people retiring, and so there's a constant turnover or turnover within the organization. Um, it's a little bit higher than normal, for sure. Uh, but overall, um, people are very committed to work here. And uh, so, so we've been able to keep operations uh, going consistently, haven't really had any impacts on our operations as a result of staffing levels. Uh, the pandemic did have us uh, suspend recreation services for a period of time uh, because that was a direct health order. Uh, but otherwise, uh, all of their operations were managed to uh, operate at their 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 normal levels. And uh, really proud of staff for being able to uh, work through that. I had mentioned to you just before we started recording that uh, Amanda and I went up Mount Tolby, which we hadn't done for a number of years. And there's a display there that reminds us how we can better steward the land on which we live. And that includes things like water management, a reminder of if you're going to wash your own vehicle, don't do it on a paved driveway, do it on, on, on grass or on land where the water can be absorbed. There's a lot of really simple things we can think about when it comes to water use too, right? That's correct. We had a, a very uh, focused demand management program back uh, 10, 15 years ago where we were uh, – encouraging, re we had rebates for uh, water saving toilets and other fixtures. Uh, and that consistent uh, public outreach campaign resulted in really a behavior change. And people generally in Greater Victoria conserve water. Uh, the brown is a new green for a lot of people in terms of their lawn. Uh, we have people that uh, uh, follow our, our um, various uh, uh, conservation levels. Right now we're in a level one, even although we have adequate water, the practice of uh, making people aware that, you know, start uh, watering on those uh, prescribed days and conserving water uh, leads to that consistent behavior in terms of water usage. And water at night, not when the heat is peaking during the daytime. Anyway, we're talking about the CRD today. Next, something else that's on everybody's mind, want to talk about housing. Our guest today on the Chamber Chat is Bob Lapham. He is the CAO of the Capital Regional District, the CRD. So one of the other areas that the CRD is involved with, Bob, along with other levels of administration and government, is housing. Tell me what the latest is on that. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, the, the CRD board uh, is also that we own a, a nonprofit corporation called the Capital Regional Housing Corporation. And our board, the CRD, serves as the board for that corporation. And uh, we currently operate uh, almost 2,000 units of uh, rental housing. And that that's... Uh, uh, ranges from core need housing that uh, has shelter rates, uh, rents, up to uh, rent geared income, where uh, we work with BC Housing to uh, have a, a rental rate uh, subsidized by BC Housing according to people's income. And then we have low end, low end of market housing. So uh, those uh, units uh, span 50 different apartment uh, townhouse complexes across the region. 
And right now we're actively develop, redeveloping some of those projects. Uh, that big one on Michigan Street in uh, Victoria, uh, others in the West Shore went up under a regional housing first program. So we're hoping to uh, build out over these last few years, uh, 2,000 units of affordable housing and grow the corporation to as many as uh, 3,000 units over the, over the short term. So it's a large operation. Uh, working with tenants uh, is very, um, you know, a lot of contact at a, uh, you know, individual level. And there's more than 3,500 people living uh, in those units today. So uh, it's a very successful program. Uh, the board invested uh, 40 million along with matching uh, 40 million contributions from BC Housing and CMHC. And uh, that $120 million investment realize, uh, will realize about $600 million worth of construction and uh, with buildings all around the region uh, with that mixed market model. So we're, we're quite proud of the progress of the corporation right now and hope to uh, sustain that increase in social housing units to deal with the, the problems in the future. I always like to take an opportunity like this to remind people that affordable housing is not the same as housing for someone who is at risk of homelessness because of a mental health or addiction issue. They are not the same. They're very often painted with the same brush, but they're not the same, right? That's right. So in our housing units, uh, you're subject to the Tenancy Act and people have to be capable of uh, uh, entering into a tenancy agreement. Otherwise, uh, they, they're in shelters or they're under some kind of uh, care of stewardship. And there is discussion about uh, complex care for housing. Just like we have complex care in our hospital district for seniors, uh, there's a need for people that have uh, uh, mental uh, issues or concerns and need uh, ongoing support to be in complex care uh, in a form of housing. So we're advancing some of that through our hospital district contribution and, and hope to realize a project here uh, quite shortly. Uh, we hear across all sectors right now, all across the chamber membership and elsewhere about two major issues. I already addressed staffing in your case. But when it comes to creating your housing, staffing is an issue for those projects as well as supply, the cost and availability of the supplies needed to build that housing. How's that affecting it? Yeah, construction costs have gone up significantly. And uh, fortunately, a lot of our housing program is initiated uh, earlier on where we could borrow at uh, much less uh, mortgage rates. And uh, But we are facing, as we get to the peak of the program, uh, increased construction costs and financing costs. So we've had to been more nimble with that. Uh, we were doing our own general contracting with the uh, support of construction managers. So, uh, and we have a good good relationship with a lot of contractors within Greater Victoria. And uh, when they're working with the local government, uh, you know, we're a reliable customer. Uh, we pay our bills on time. And uh, we have a lot of certainty in terms of what our, our product we're, we're uh, building is. And so uh, that attracts interest from the construction community and, and they show up in their pencils to make sure we can get the projects uh, moving forward. I want to change gears a little bit here. Um, a lot of people go boating at this time of year. They love to go out and tour around the Gulf Islands and the regions that are so beautiful here. Whenever you are at a moorage on a Gulf Island, you can thank the CRD for that, right? Yes, we operate uh, 11 different wharf uh, and dock facilities across the islands. So there are a few independent ones that are operated by societies, but uh, for the most part, the wharves and docks across the Southern Gulf Islands are uh, managed and operated by the CRD. Uh, right now we're doing some cut capital upgrades to some of those docks, uh, uh, evaluating how we, uh, deal with mortgage there. And, uh, they're really a, a connection for people on the islands to get between islands. And, uh, there's uh, water taxis that take people to school. There's water taxis that take people around to get to services. So it's quite an active part of living in the Gulf islands. And so we've been involved in that for, for many years now. One of the things we hear about across uh, the CRD, if you will, within our model of 13 municipalities, and speaking of building and projects, is the permitting process that have to, has to be undertaken, and it differs from municipality to municipality. However, on the Gulf Islands, that process is yours at the CRD, right? That's right. So uh, in the Gulf Islands, uh, there's 70 islands within the CRD, and uh, the Islands Trust was formed to deal with land use planning for those islands. So. Uh, there's a separate provincial agency known as the Islands Trust that administers planning and land use, but all the other services, uh, for the most part, are managed uh, by the CRD. Uh, there are a few improvement districts, which are a uh, form of uh, independent uh, local government as well, operating some of the fire departments and uh, water systems. But uh, we do operate uh, numerous water systems, wastewater systems, uh, administer all the building inspection for those islands, 
as well as uh, other environmental uh, protection initiatives. Quite an active uh, part of our work uh, in the unincorporated areas. 70 Island, I had no idea, 7-0. Seven, 7-0 zero. Seven, zero within the CRD boundary. So that ranges from very small private islands yeah. but, uh, up to uh, the larger islands like uh, Salt Spring Island with a, a seasonal population of around 11,500. So, uh, which is much larger than many municipalities in the province. Uh, um, and that's operated uh, as a as a CRD uh, governance model with the Allen's Trust. Yeah, it's funny. We think of Salt Spring, Galliano, Maine, Pender, Saturna, but there's all these other ones. That's that's one of the Galliano. one of the magical things about this region. That's for sure. Um, I want to move into another uh, thing that we touched on a little bit earlier. Next, I want to talk about invasive species and the impact that has on our region. Our guest today on Chamber Chats is Bob Lapham. He's the CAO, Chief Administrative Officer for the Capital Regional District. Every spring, Bob, I get very frustrated and almost sad when I see the oceans and seas of broom that have taken over your entire region. You know, when you fly over it, it's just heartbreaking to see how much of it's around. And that's just the most visible of many invasive species that are choking out what should normally be living here. Talk to me about what the CRD is doing about that. Yeah, so we have an invasive species program. We, we really work with the uh, municipalities and an intermunicipal working group to uh, harness a uh, volunteer initiative. So a lot of, a lot of people volunteer to, uh, you know, th there's a, a groups that go out and pull broom or manage a broom or, or, or tend to other invasive species. And then we do some research to supporting uh, the impact of, of those species potentially on our, our environment in the region, uh, park system, things like that. So I know, uh, there's been problems with ants this year. There's a lot more ants and uh, there's these various invasive ants out there as well, red ants and, and other things like that. So we're involved uh, in basically pulling that information together, uh, supporting and providing that to various volunteer groups or uh, municipalities that have their own programs. And then we have a, a coordinator that, that seeks funding and uh, aligns uh, the work with the uh, Ministry of Environment's priorities and objectives as well. That siren is not a CRD vehicle. We just want to point out that we're just doing this on a regular business day. So that's what happens. I didn't know about the ants. I mean, it's funny you mentioned that because I've, I've noticed there are more ants around where we live, for example. What's, what's that all about? Uh, I, I think it's just the drier conditions. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't know a lot about it myself, but I know, uh, I think that there's fire ants or something that are they can oh, yeah. be quite invasive. And I know we had a discussion at the board level about uh, looking into that uh, kind of um, impact on the environment as well. We've, we've dealt with deer before, uh, come up with uh, deer management recommendations. Uh, we're involved in looking at uh, geese. Uh, so there's an initiative right now by the board to uh, promote geese idling and uh, to advance some of that work uh, to lessen the impact on uh, our beaches and playing fields and other things like that. So. Uh, we don't have a full-blown wildlife function. Uh, the, the province has authority over wildlife, but we do uh, within our operation of parks, water supply area, and uh, some of the, the local programs uh, keep an eye on it and, and try to advance uh, public education and uh, work, work efforts on that. Yeah. thing to remember about broom, of course, is cut broom in bloom. So when it's yellow, that's when you cut it. That means that it's going gonna, it's gonna to eliminate it right there. That's, and the, you know what else is funny? Along the, all the trails... At this time of year and a little bit earlier, people come with their little empty Tupperware things and they're picking berries along the trail. Those berries are an invasive species. They're not native to here, right? And they do pretty well this year. <laughs> it's, well, it's I know good. I got some giant blackberries in my yard and they're, uh, they seem to be growing like, uh, I don't know, bamboo. Like, an, that, they're like invasive species. <laughs> well, like bamboo. Yeah, you don't want that. Uh, when we talk about invasive species, and you and I have chatted about this in the past, we can take great leadership from the leadership of the nations around here. There are uh, many chiefs and counselors and elders who will talk about how we need to manage that to return as much as possible to the way it was historically before colonization, before all of this arrived to interrupt the natural balance of nature. So your ongoing conversations and your indigenous relations department is, is quite remarkable. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we're, we have uh, various tables around the region. We, we have government to government relationships at the uh, leadership level with our board chair, Colin Plant, and, and myself to uh, work with nations to understand their priorities. And then we have staff that are right down at the operational level, um, learning and understanding uh, 
cultural and uh, uh, other practices uh, that nations have applied for, for millennia and, and uh, applying those to some of our management practices. Uh, we do have some staff involved directly in the water supply, uh, dealing with the vegetation management as well as in the park system. So we're hoping to expand that and learn and uh, uh, collaborate more with First Nations on how those programs get developed and, and the work we do. You know, the, the more we talk with you about these kinds of things, we understand how complex, if you will, and how intricate the system of operating the CRD really is. Uh, and you've been a part of this for a long time, but Bob, you're retiring very soon. You're going to step away after a long, long time of doing this. Um, what are you proudest of, do you think, in the time that you've been in this position? Well, coming up on the CEO, it'll be 10 years pretty much uh, by the time I retire. We report to the board on progress regularly. They check in annually, and uh, there's very good alignment uh, between what staff's doing and what the board uh, priorities are. So I'm really proud of that in my capacity as CAO. And then we've advanced some very uh, significant initiatives like the Housing First program I mentioned uh, in terms of uh, increasing the number of uh, rental housing stock we have in this region, which is a, a key priority to everybody. And then uh, the hospital district, we've expanded our involvement in uh, building, developing a number of projects around the region, uh, like the summit, uh, Mount View Heights, uh, and really moved uh, the health authority forward in this region in terms of getting projects on the ground more quickly. Um, and that, that's an ongoing concern as the medical health system faces a lot of pressures. So we're there both, uh, we fund up to 30% of those capital projects uh, from our hospital district board. And we're also managed construction and assist in, in development. So we're quite involved there uh, since, since I joined the CRD. And uh, overall, I'm just really happy with the, the board's uh, uh, acknowledgement of the work we're doing as staff and uh, um, that, that we're really uh, moving things forward despite uh, things that come up like the pandemic mm. or other emergencies or instances where we're able to maintain operations, maintain business continuity and deliver the needs of the region uh, very effectively. So uh, I feel I've accomplished a lot of that in the, in the role of CEO coming from the general manager of planning and tech services before that. I think many would agree. And in fact, I know you're a guy who doesn't do what you do to win awards, but you just did receive an award uh, from the local government management association. You've been named uh, as, your, uh, as a recipient of an award for your volunteer service with that organization. So congratulations and thanks for doing all that. And Bob, you've left a mark, and we appreciate the time you've taken to speak with us, and all the best with your next steps. Thanks so much, Bruce, and I really enjoyed working with you as well, both at the chamber level and uh, as well over the years. Pretty much since I joined the CRD, we've, uh, we've had a really good relationship in terms of uh, your understanding and uh, assisting the CRD and getting the message out about what we did. Great. Bob Lapham is the outgoing, retiring Chief Administrative Officer for the Capital Regional District. And that's our Chamber Chat for today. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you next time.